And embarrassingly, long time ago, I purchased this watercolor set from my favorite local art supply store. I intended on buying this to make a video on it, and then I just wasn't in the mood to make videos for a while, so it had been sitting on my floor for like, if not a year, longer than that. I don't know how long it's been. I've had this set for a while, but this is a watercolor palette by the Viviva Watercolors brand, which is super cool because I actually, I, I purchased this myself like around a year ago. I still haven't seen anyone use this palette. Uh, I didn't really like search for it on YouTube or anything, but it's never been something that's been brought to my attention. So I don't know how popular these are. This is the same brand that makes those watercolor like booklet sheets where they're really thin sheets and they have watercolors in them that you can use for kind of on the go. I saw this palette and I was like, this is so much better than the sheets because I have wanted to try the sheets for a while now, but I didn't really see a point in buying them. It was mostly just like to play with them and to make a video on them and just kind of see whether I liked them or not because personally, I don't do a lot of art on the go. I feel like very comfortable doing art in my own home. I envy people who can go outside and do like plein air paintings or paint in coffee shops. That can't be me. I don't want to be perceived by the general public and I feel like that's really putting yourself out there to be perceived by the general public. Uh, if someone ever came up to me and tried to talk to me, I would want to peel off my skin. I do not want to be spoken to. I do not want to be... I do not want to be perceived by strangers. Um, so, travel watercolors are not something that's important to me. It's not something that is convenient for me. I really like my regular watercolor palette. So, when I saw this one, I was like, this is such a good in-between. Because first of all, as you can see, the palette is made out of cork, which is insanely cool. I had never seen anything like that before. It's supposed to be eco-friendly, which is pretty cool. Um, and the color selection of this palette is so pretty. Like I said, I've held on to this for around a year. I never actually opened it before. I thought I did when I first opened it, but as you could see in the footage of me actually like opening the palette, it like the paper on the front was adhered to the palette itself. I think it was just stuck to some of the watercolors on there. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. Uh, but yeah, I the colors, the colors are so pretty. These watercolors are a little strange. I want to say they kind of behave similarly to the Kuratake Gonzai Tombi watercolors, which are a much more opaque watercolor, and they can also give off like almost a shiny property if you use the watercolor thick as opposed to diluting it more. These are kind of reminiscent of that. The colors just feel very opaque when you let them get that way. Uh, you can paint with them super, super thin. In my swatches, I kind of went back and forth between painting thinner and painting thicker, simply because sometimes I would just ac accidentally get the really thick consistency of paint, uh, but it is a good way to see like the true actual color that it can put out. But as you can see, this is like such a gorgeous selection of colors. Because I hadn't looked at it in a really long time, I didn't realize specifically it's called their spring color set, and it is giving spring. There are so many beautiful colors in here that are very mixed with white. There's like the really pretty pastel pink color, there's a really light tealish, like light blue, almost like minty color. I don't know how to describe that at all, which is actually very funny, um, but they're very obvious like pigments that have been mixed with white, so they kind of have a creamier look to them. Also, there is such a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous poopy sap green in this set. I am in love with that color. It is such a good poopy green. It is probably my favorite color. I feel like the colors in this set, it's such a nice combination. It is such a pretty selection of colors. And the watercolors themselves, I was actually really impressed with how they lay down. They're not as shiny as the Kuretake Gonsai Tombi watercolors. I feel like if you really layered them and really made your watercolor mixture thick, you could get them to show a little bit of shininess. But they're not chalky at all. They don't feel bad when you touch the actual finished painting or the swatches or anything like that. I did swatch them twice. Uh, it actually comes with its own little swatch sheet, which is super nice, but as someone who really likes swatching, I also like to swatch them in my sketchbook just so like I have that in my sketchbook that if I ever want to look at it in the future, it's in multiple places. I'm a freak for swatching. I know some people don't like swatching, but I personally think I could swatch forever. 
But as far as the painting goes, I painted Madoka from Madoka Magica because I have had Madoka Magica brain rot uh, quite a bit lately. They released a new movie, but I was kind of experiencing brain rot prior to that because there's this company on Instagram called Steady Hands and they do cardigans and shirts and other apparel things, but like, their main thing is cardigans and I got a Madoka Magica cardigan as a pre-order as like a late birthday present to myself and it showed up recently and it's so nice and it's so soft and it's so cozy. And then on top of that, um, Bisu Lovely, which is my favorite jewelry company, did a licensed collaboration with Madoka Magica and released some pieces. So they very kindly sent me a piece. So I've just been like, I had a day where I got two Madoka themed things in the mail and I've been showing my boyfriend the series and he's been watching it with me, which is so exciting because he's never seen it before and it's so good. And then they released that they're making a fourth movie, which they released that technically a while ago. I feel like it's been a couple years, but they actually put out the trailer I think yesterday, as of the time of me recording this voiceover, which I have seen, and if anything, it just scares me because the characters in the series have already been through so much trauma and bad things, and I know they're going to continue going through trauma and bad things. So I'm very excited for the movie. I have been very mentally in the headspace of being into the series right now, hence why I'm doing this painting. I found recently, as I've still been like struggling with art block, that Painting things from reference, especially like character work right now, is so lovely and so helpful. This specific pose is actually entirely referenced from a figure of Madoka. I just copied the pose and did it in my style, and I'm actually really happy with how this painting turned out. I haven't done a ton of watercolors lately, and especially working with a new palette, things could technically go very bad, but it actually went really well doing this painting. I am so desperately in love with the watercolor brushes I'm using in this video. The brushes I'm using are the silver black velvet watercolor brushes, which I only have two of them, but they're easily the most expensive brushes I own. They're not horrible, but I think um, where I got them from, which thankfully the local art supply shop around here, they have really, really good prices. And so everything is below just like the regular MSRP of art supplies. I think I got them there for around like 12 to 15 each. I only have two of them. I have a round size eight and a round size four. I would theoretically like to get more in the future, but honestly, just alone with these two brushes, the diversity of like weights that you're able to get with these brushes is insane. They have such nice pointed tips. They always reform to be very pointed, like immediately you don't have, or personally at least, I haven't had any issues with them fraying or anything. They're such nice brushes. I love using them so much. My other main watercolor brushes are the Princeton Velvet Touch series. I really like those ones too. I got into them through Art Snacks actually. I got sent one of their brushes in a very old Art Snacks box and really enjoyed it. So I ended up buying like a bunch more sizes, but these black velvet ones are so sexy. They're so nice. They're so nice. I love them so much. You can just get really fine points. You can get really thick like areas to put down. They are fantastic for doing leaves as you can see I'm doing right now because I just kind of go with the shape of the brush and I'm able to get such nice fine lines whilst also making a really good leaf shape. Highly recommend if you're in the market for new watercolor brushes and you can afford to dish out around like $15 a brush. Very worth it. Also, this watercolor set really impressed me because it is, I guess, kind of like on the cheaper side of watercolors and I'm so used to my professional palette right now. I was really impressed with these. They were really fun to work with. I loved that the watercolor palette itself had a little sheet for mixing attached to the palette just because I did end up using that a lot and it was very convenient to have a mixing surface just like right with the palette as you normally would with a plastic or metal palette. It was so much fun. It was a lot of fun to do. If you guys have tried these watercolors, I would love to hear your opinions on them. I haven't tried the sheets myself, but using these was a really fun experience and I haven't seen anyone else use the actual like palette itself. So if you have, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.